Warriors, how we doing? Welcome to the SPACs Attack. Yes, yes, we got another great interview for you guys. Up next, we will be talking about wall box. I mean, hey guys, if you guys got EVs, thinking about EVs, looking at the Charger game, definitely stick around. This is going to be a very interesting interview. I know Chris is super excited. I'm excited. Let's go ahead and let's get into our show a little bit. We got a lot of headlines, some deals that are going to be coming up. And at the end, we'll be taking a look at the watch list and seeing what's moving. I did see some stocks moving out there. So definitely take a look. We'll go ahead and get into some of these. Let's go ahead and get into the SPACs attack. What up, what up, my guys? How we doing? Let's go ahead and bring on my man, the Chris Ketchy. What's going on, Mitch? Yeah, hold, there's four deals today. We got headlines Lord, out there. They make there. you work today extra, Chris. Yeah, you know, that I've heard of Merge, <laughs> Merger Monday, but I guess, you know, we're, we're back to Merger Tuesday here. No, so, you, uh, you know what happened was there was a... Uh, a kind of a delayed effect there. You know, was, I heard there was a hangover Monday in between <laughs> there. That's what happened, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it would be so much easier if we could just get all these deal announcements on like Wednesday or Thursday, you know, in the weeks <laughs> in the middle there. Let them know, Chris. You, know, you yeah, run the SPACs so... world, man. <laughs> you, but here you run we this are industry. With, here we are with lots of news to talk about today. Well, smash the like, guys. I'll go ahead and get my ugly self off and let you guys deal with Chris. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, so turning to headlines today. Up first, we have ticker FIII. This is the company merging with Electric Last Mile. So they were out with some news related to FedEx. And then also have an event coming up July 30th where they will show off an electric medium duty truck. Um, so this is one to watch, right? Because anytime you get these companies... Uh, in the EV space that show off new vehicles that leads to the possibility of, you know, more purchase orders. And then they also have that relationship with FedEx. Maybe we get some more color, more deals from them there. So keep an eye out on that one. Uh, yesterday, Nikola shares were down. So uh, an S1 filing from the company showed that they could sell 18 million shares uh, via one of their shareholders, uh, uh, Tumium Stone Capital. So, so another person bailing on uh, Nicola here. So keep an eye out, NKLA. And then we have ACAC. So uh, merger with Play Studios uh, has been complete. Shares will start trading as MYPS soon. Uh, a note on this merger and something we're going to dive into in more detail soon is that 52% or 11.3 million shares were actually redeemed at the merger for ACAC. Um, so the deal still went through because that's the way they had it structured. Um, but ultimately, that means less cash for this company going forward as when they issued that original presentation, their projections, their growth plans. So that's something to keep an eye on as they're not going to have as much money as originally forecasted. Then we have Rush Street Interactive, RSI, one we've talked about so many times and also mentioned yesterday on all those sports betting names. They signed a deal with the Chicago Bears of the NFL for their BetRivers.com and Rivers Casino properties. So this is a multi-year deal, um, an exclusive partnership. So BetRivers and Rivers Casino will get prominent in-stadium in signage digital, social, and print assets. They'll also be the partner on a free-to-play game on the Chicago Bears official app. Um, so that could gain some potential customers for Bet Rivers. Um, remember, they do have pretty strong share in, in the state of Illinois. So this is definitely, you know, something to keep an eye on here. Then we have MUDS, M-U-D-S. So their merger partner tops out with first quarter sales. 
$166.6 million. That's up 53% year over year and also raising guidance going forward. So for the full year, they see revenue hitting 740 to 760 million dollars, which would be an increase of 31 percent to 34 percent year over year. Adjusted EBITDA now in a range of 130 to 140 million dollars, which would be up 41 to 52 percent. Um, you know, so nice to see tops and muds. You know, get a guidance update here. Remember, this is one that we've been fans of. For a while, you heard Mitch talk about it on Friday's show, um, you know, arguing that it could be a winner in the NFT space as well. So definitely keep an eye out on MUDs, and it is one of our movers today. Then we have Proterra, PTRA, uh, announcing a, a new deal with the Miami-Dade County. Um, so acquiring 42 of their ZX-5 electric transit buses, um, so that now brings plans to install 75 Proterra char chargers and those buses um, delivered in 2022. So that's a decent sized deal for Proterra, um, you know, and they have one of the largest fleets of electric transit buses in the U.S. Um, and they keep signing deals. That's been a key item for me and why I own shares of Proterra here. So if this one's not on your watch list, remember PTRA. One of our movers yesterday, HCIC, ended the day up 2%. That was on that Amazon news um, that they could acquire up to 20% of the company via warrants. And they also were going to purchase uh, autonomous trucks from the company. Shares are down almost a percent today, giving back most of the gains. So we're at about 1013 today. Um, HCIC still on my watch list here. And then uh, getting some new merger vote dates, which I will have to add to the updated calendar. Um, NSTB, June 29th. And then we have some July dates starting to take shape. So SBG on July 14th, DCRB on July 15th, GHVI on July 20th, and RSVA on July 12th. We will get that July calendar updated, and I'll also have an article out at the start of the month talking about the deals for the month. So then we turn to our deals. So four deals, two of them were smaller biotech deals, which I don't have as much details on. BCYP uh, announcing a deal with SAB Antibody, which is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company working on an immunotherapy platform. Um, this is a $325 million deal. And then also THMA, a, a deal with Pair Therapeutics, which is the first end-to-end -end platform for prescription digital therapeutics. Uh, projected revenue of $4 million in 2021, $22 million in 2022. And this was done at a $1.2 billion valuation. And then... Uh, Getting to uh, two of the bigger deals today. So we have CCAC. This was for a LIDAR company. So Quanergy uh, merging with CCAC valued at $1.4 billion. Expected to trade or close in the second half of 2021 under the new ticker QNGY. Current shareholders will own 20.4% of the company. So we've seen lots of LiDAR companies go public. This one's a little bit different. They have CMOS, Silicon, Solid State, OPA technology, which they call a game changer. Over 350 customers, 40 partnerships worldwide. They have shipped over 5,500 sensors and currently have over 80 active pilot programs. Led by Dr. Kevin Kennedy with 40 years experience in the industry. He's been the CEO of several other companies and also formerly worked at Cisco Systems as a senior vice president. Current investors in Quantergy include Aptiv, Daimler, Enterprise Renicar, and Samsung. So Quantergy thinks it can be a market leader in the LiDAR sector. Um, that 100% CMOS, OPA, solid state technology, uh, can help bring down the cost of, of LIDARs. It also has high, higher reliability than other LIDAR sensors, can provide act, adaptive zoom, and has active scanning. 
So they see the automotive LIDAR sector hitting $10.6 billion by 2030. And then also the Internet of Things LIDAR market hitting $16.7 billion by the year 2030. So other operators, you know, use MEMS LIDAR. Quantergy, the only one currently using that OPA technology. So they are going to initially target sectors like mapping, security, and smart cities under that Internet of Things umbrella. And then after that, they'll get into industrial automation and automotive sectors. So revenue of seven million expected this fiscal year, twenty-seven million in 2022, and hitting five hundred forty-nine million in fiscal 2025. One of the interesting things from their presentation was that by 2025, 18 percent of their revenue will be automotive. You compare that to some of the other lidar companies like Velodyne and uh, Luminar where they have 70 to 90% of their revenue coming from automotive. So Quantergy looks to be more diversified in the LiDAR space. So definitely something to watch. And then our other big deal today, we have DDMX uh, merging with Codare. So this will be the first publicly traded Latin American online gaming and sports betting operator valued at $350 million. Current DDMX public shareholders will own 25% of the company. This is the same SPAC group that did BWMX, which we recently had on the show. So Coderre launched in 2014 uh, a mission to be the leader in online gaming and sports betting in Latin America. They currently operate or are getting ready to operate in their six core markets, Spain, Italy, Mexico, Colombia, Panama, and, and Buenos Aires, the city, um, as Argentina currently not completely relegated. Their online market share, 6% in Spain, 6% in Colombia, 3% in Panama, and 11% in Mexico. They have a sponsorship deal with Real Madrid. So if you watch soccer, you may be familiar with this brand, which helps their market share there in Spain. Um, they also list Brazil, Chile, Peru, Puerto Rico, Uruguay, and Argentina as countries that may regulate online sports betting and gaming in the future that they would expand to. And, and then another exciting growth venture for Codere is, is to target the Hispanic population of the U.S. Um, so there's 60 million uh, Hispanics in the U.S., $15.3 billion dollars addressable market that Coderre thinks they can, you know, appeal to with their products. This deal being done at 2.3 times 2022 revenue estimate of 150 million, which is significantly lower than valuations for DraftKings, Win Resorts, Golden Nugget Online, and Points Bets, which trade at a peer group median of 5.1x. Uh, so revenue of 85 million in 2020. 108 million in 2021 expected. Uh, in fiscal 2020, revenue was 59% from Spain, 34% from Mexico. So as you can see, you know those two countries making up a large piece of the pie. Um, but as they expand to other markets, this is definitely one to watch. You know, Mitch, we talk sports betting, online gaming, and here you have one. You know, outside of the U.S., several of those Latin American markets, and also you know. Looks like they're going to target the U.S. with that very specific Hispanic market, um, which I think could be something to watch and also could make this company a, a acquisition target once again down the road. So uh, that deal, DDMX, that's what I've got, Mitch. Headlines, those, those four deals, um, you know, exciting day out there on this Tuesday. Yeah, definitely. we got some movement out there. We're going to get into the watch list a little bit later. Definitely stick around, guys. After the interview from Wallbox, we'll definitely get into our watch list. There's a lot of movers out there, so I just want to put some on the radar. Right now, recently, desktop metal is taking off. That's really moving, I think, based off of that 3D news. If you look at Triple D, you'll start seeing they had a good partnership. I think this is actually going to be able to push up the stock. We're, we're seeing it up about trading about 5%, SPCE about, about 5%, Clover up 13%. And then right behind that, you got Nikola and Muds also up 4%. So keep your eyes on those. Let's go ahead and let's get into the interview today. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get into our interview. This is where we unlock some SPACs. So stay tuned, guys. Just up next, we'll have Wallbox.
All right, guys, another exclusive here on Spax Attack. So joining us today, we have Enric Asuncion, the CEO of Wallbox, and Justin Miro, the chairman and CEO of Kensington Capital 2. That ticker is KCAC. Companies recently announced a SPAC merger that will bring Wallbox public. Again, ticker KCAC. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on SPAX Attack today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Great. Thanks, guys. Definitely, definitely. I'm going to let Chris go ahead and lead with some questions, and I'll be back with some of my own. All right, so let's jump in here. So, uh, you know, try to get questions for both of you guys here. Feel free to jump in, though, you know, for, for anything uh, that appeals to you as well. So so up first, you know, let's start with Enric here. So, you know, Wallbox, why the decision to, to go public via SPAC and, you know, was a traditional IPO also uh, being considered for the company here? Yeah, so we, we are one of the fastest growing companies in the space. Uh, we also were one, were one of the truly global players in the space. So this was the right moment for us. And going through a SPAC uh, with Kensington was bringing us the possibility to have long-term uh, investors, long-term capital, and also uh, meeting Kensington where we share the same vision for, for our company, where we agree that the electric car will play a key role in the energy transition. You know, sharing the same vision and having their expertise was the right thing to do. Perfect, and then, you know, uh, Justin, uh, you, you've done a SPAC deal before, KCAC. You, you know, you had your pick of many different companies out there with this second SPAC. You know, give, a, give us the, the main thesis here. Why Wallbox, um, you know, as the target company for, for this SPAC? That's great, Chris, and uh, and thanks again for having us on your show here. Um, yeah, our first SPAC, which we merged with QuantumScape, obviously gave us some credentials in the uh, in the EV space uh, quite firmly. And uh, you know, it's interesting. Kensington continues to this day the really the only SPAC that has real automotive credentials. And uh, you know, I'm very excited uh, that you know my team at Kensington. Uh, there's ten of us all with very deep automotive credentials uh, from a global standpoint. You know, what we saw in Enrique and the team at Wallbox is truly a visionary team uh, that has really embraced what we view as the single greatest mega trend in the automotive industry during our lifetimes, during our careers, and that is the electrification of the powertrain. And, um, you know, while our, our last deal, you know, we, we invested in, uh, you know, EV batteries. Uh, and so we have a lot of knowledge about how batteries are used, uh, how the OEMs are looking at the EVs uh, to grow their business. What was re really exciting about Wallbox uh, was that, you know, they are focused on the infrastructure and the fact that this infrastructure is really front and center right now, not just with governments around the world, but individual investors. And here is a way for individual investors to really benefit this whole green revolution. And, you know, keep in mind, as, as every OEM around the world is spending tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars to roll out all of these electric vehicles, every single one of them needs to be charged. And the fact that Wallbox makes what we view to be the simplest, the safest, uh, the most innovative chargers on the market today for consumers. Uh, we just found that ex extremely powerful, and we're very excited to support Enrique and his vision to roll this out on a global basis. Perfect. So, uh, Enrique, give us the the background here. You know, for viewers who are not familiar with Wallbox, what is Wallbox all about, and how is it truly, you know, a global player in, in this industry? So, you know, we design, develop, and manufacture intelligent charging systems for electric cars. That's one thing we do. We already installed more than 100,000 chargers all around the world for home, for, for, for semi-public space, and also we are going to launch now uh, public charging. But the key of Wallbox is not only uh, solving charging, it's the technology. We have breakthrough engineering. Uh, an example of that is Quasar. We have a product that can not only charge your car, also can discharge your car and use the energy from your battery to power your home and power the grid. 
and an electric vehicle battery can power a home for four days. So, you know, you, taking advantage of this capacity and this energy to support your home and to support the grid, it's going to enable the energy transition. So we are not only doing charging, we are doing energy management and we have the technology to do all of this. We also, as I said, we are one of the fastest growing companies in the space and we are global. We have presence today in 67 countries, in six continents. We actually have offices in three continents and we have uh, open uh, factories in, in Europe, in China. And at the second half of next year, we are opening a new factory in the US to supply in the North American market. And we are, as I said, vertically integrated uh, company. We control everything. We design, develop and manufacture uh, the products. We control the supply chain. And this gives us a huge advantage because going to new countries is not only having an office to sell the product, it's have the product certified uh, for, the, for this market. Uh, you need all special requirements for selling on all these markets. We have all of them. And the fact that we control everything in-house allows us to be faster, uh, to fulfill market requirements faster than anybody and you know keep growing faster than anybody. And finally, it's the team. We have a great team. And with the expertise and experience of the Kensington team, we believe that we are going to even accelerate this even more. You know, Chris, I, I would just like to add what Enrique just said there, because it's a very important point. And I, I just I, I, I don't want to let it go here. You know, the fact that, you know, Kensington team, we're a bunch of operators. Uh, we've spent our entire careers in the automotive industry. And, uh, you know, we know what it takes to compete in the global automotive industry. It's very difficult. Uh, you know, the automotive quality, the volume demands, uh, the certification requirements, not just of the countries, as Enrique mentioned, but the but the OEMs, the dealerships. This is a very difficult industry. Frankly, it's all we know. I, I heard on your earlier podcast, uh, you know, you're talking about all the other SPACs doing healthcare and cannabis and real estate. We don't do any of that. <laughs> we only we only know automotive and we only know you know very strong manufacturing. And the fact that Wallbox has demonstrated that with their their facilities, with their supply chain. The fact that the company has 45% gross margins, I mean, that's unheard of. There's no one in the industry that actually has that type of profitability. On, and the company has sold hundreds of thousands of these chargers. And, and that, to us, really demonstrates a proficiency in, in what we say getting metal out the door. So we're very excited to support that strategy and really help you know, the company you know, take what they've done, which is an amazing accomplishments around the world and really help them accelerate that strategy in the North American market where we have very strong relationships. So just to follow up on that, uh, Justin, and then maybe turning to Enrique here, we're already starting to get some questions in the chat. One of my next topics here is, you know, partnerships. So, you know, you mentioned the, the auto industry here. Uh, who does Wallbox have partnerships with, you know, and are these licensing deals? What does kind of the structure look like for some of these clients and partners? So I, I will reply this, this one. So, uh, you know, we work with most of the car manufacturers and utilities in the world. For example, with Nissan, we supply them uh, in 36 countries. And for Nissan was key. And this is what uh, Justin was saying, it's key to have a, a, a global player. So car manufacturers want players and suppliers that can support them with the product in each country, with the certifications, with the installation support, with the service support. So the fact that we uh, are able to provide solutions in all those countries is key. Uh, you can see here we're with Nissan, with uh, Seat, which is a Volkswagen Group company. Even in China, we have a joint venture where we supply to Honchi, which is a state-owned car manufacturer. And uh, in China, they choose our product, especially for the technology uh, that allows uh, internet connectivity without Wi-Fi or 4G using the Bluetooth of the phone. So here, as you know, in China, the interaction between the phone and the devices is very important. So we, we have all these solutions in all of our products, but also energy companies. Uh, we have Iberdrola. Iberdrola is one of the biggest utility uh, in the world. Uh, they are also one of our investors and board members. And recently with Iberdrola, uh, they have placed us an order of more than 1,000 fast chargers, uh, which, you know, it's a total order at the end with all the utilities of more than 8,000 fast chargers, which amount to more than $130 million to deliver in the next couple of years. But uh, with Iberdrola, we work in all the countries where they operate in Europe. Same for Copec 
in South America. They are a strong energy company that is building a corridor for, for all, in all South America for public chargers. So we work with carbon factors, with utility, but also we work with uh, what we call our distributors. And these are companies like the Rexel, GS Electric, Ingram Micro. These are global companies that can make sure we deliver our products to uh, installers, retails, which you know amount to 40% of our sales. So 40% goes to this channel, 40% to car manufacturers and utilities, and it, the last one will be our direct sales to e-commerce with the e-commerce and direct sales to big enterprises. Perfect. So you know, uh, Justin, we've seen lots of uh, you know charging infrastructure companies go public, um, you know, via SPAC. How important are some of Wallbox's growth objectives here? You know, we have that bi-directional DC charger for the home. We, we've got the My Wallbox for residential and business software. You know, when you look at the growth plan for for Wallbox, you know, what are the the key items here? You know, in, in your opinion, Justin, that really set Wallbox, you know, uh, apart from some of the competition out there. Sure, Chris. Well, you know, I'll go back to my earlier comment. I, I, from our standpoint, uh, growth doesn't mean anything unless you have solid uh, foundation to work off of. And having, once again, 45% gross margins uh, today um, to, to work off of is very important. You heard Enrique mention uh, that the company has multiple uh, lines of pipeline of background here for uh, whether it's the public chargers through Iberdrola, or the fact that the company currently sells product in over 67 countries. Uh, that's not an easy feat. Um, and especially in Europe, which has much more stringent uh, requirements for electrical cert uh, certifications. I mean, let's think about this. These are you know, very small devices, but they're running 40 amps, 220 volts, powering your $50,000 car. Um, this is very critical equipment uh, and it has to be certified. And you saw that list just a moment ago with companies like Mercedes and Nissan and Mitsubishi uh, that have actually certified the product uh, at the OEM level so that it works. And it also works from a DC bi-directional uh, standpoint, which you just highlighted. Wallbox is the only company that we're aware of that actually has a DC bi-directional charging product. You see on this screen right here, it's listed as the Quasar product. And that can actually be mounted at your home. It could be mounted at your business. No one else offers a product like that. And it goes beyond uh, just saying that you're gonna do it. The company has sold thousands of these units. It's been certified in places like Germany, the UK, very stringent requirements. So we feel that it, it's a multi-pronged approach. The company has world leading margins. So you need that because you gotta be profitable. Okay, at the end of the day, doesn't matter what your top line is. If you don't have the profits, you're not gonna last very long. The company has the profitability, the company has the products, the company has the pipeline, and they're selling into all these markets. And then as you heard, they have the infrastructure to build these products. You've heard other companies uh, talk about supply chain interruption. You know, this, this is a very important point. We spent time at the company's manufacturing facilities. Look, you can see the team at Kensington. We're, we're a bunch of hardcore manufacturing people. I have the former head of purchasing from Chrysler on my team, You know, someone that's gone around the world looking at how you buy components. And we looked at everything. We said, this is a company that can fulfill their forecast. That is critically important, not only for us, but for our shareholders. Awesome. So, so Enric, you know, you mentioned a little bit on the, the manufacturing side of things. So Wallbox currently has operations in Spain and China for manufacturing plans for a U.S. location in 2022. Um, you know, if I'm not mistaken, I don't believe, you know, a location has been announced yet. Well, what's the timeline look like for uh, when Wallbox will announce the location in the U.S.? And then are there other plans for, you know, more facilities in other countries going forward? Or will that U.S. location, you know, really be enough for, for Wallbox in terms of uh, manufacturing capacity? So we are right now, we, we have been working a couple of months and uh, finding the location. We expect in the next weeks to be able to announce it. Uh, right now we cannot, but pretty soon once we close everything, we'll be able to, to share with you. Uh, regarding new factories, uh, you know, this 
facilities we are making sure are big enough to add more uh, manufacturing lines. So maybe we start in the US with uh, three assembly lines, one for Supernova, one for Quasar in the US and another one for Pulsar, which is the product we are selling for foam charging. But then we can duplicate or, or with more manufacturing lines so we, we can grow. We expect by 2025, 2024, around this time to add a new facility, uh, which we still have to decide the location. But, uh, but by then we will need to in, in, increase our capacity in terms of new facilities. Perfect. And then, uh, Enrique, another question here. We have this slide in the presentation, um, slide 17. Uh, be the provider of all-in-one renewable energy solutions with the charger at the center. You know, it lists some items like energy storage, energy as a payment, utility consulting, peer-to-peer um, -peer energy transactions. Can you just walk us through a little bit on, on the timeline? You know, are these items all, you know, a couple years out, five to ten years out? Um, what's kind of the roadmap for for really completing this uh, item for Wallbox? Yeah, so the things we're already doing, but I, I just want to share with you what what's the power behind this slide because we are going to be the center of the energy at home, and every charger we are selling today with our software is enabling this vision because first of all, you use the charger to charge your car, which amounts to fifty percent of your home energy consumption. When you buy an electric car, you double home consumption. But also you will use the, the charger as your storage because with bidirectional charging with Quasar, you can use your electric vehicle car battery, which is a massive battery. It's like 10 times bigger than any power wall. You can uh, use it as a storage for your home. So, and finally, uh, the, the next version of Quasar will be used as a solar inverter. You know, these devices where you connect your solar panels to power, uh, you know, solar panel to, to to the grid and you have a solar inverter, the charger itself, Quasar, can be an inverter. So you will directly connect the solar panels to the Quasar. So the charger becomes your production, your storage, and your energy management system. So it becomes the center of your energy at home. Every charger we're sending today is enabling this vision in the future. And, you know, many things we're already doing today, as Justin was saying, energy storage in the uk we are providing grid services like demand response uh, frequency regulation where we sell energy to the grid with some of our partners like octopus energy same we are doing in australia with nissan uh, so many of the things are happening here i think the the the, the thing we is not considering our business plan in terms of, of numbers is the peer-to-peer -peer energy transaction because that will depend on regulations uh, but but the rest of the things is things that we are already in some countries already delivering and what's really, really important is that the, the charger is going to be the center of the energy at home. And we are making this possible already today. Yeah, I want to. I just want to reiterate, Go ahead. Go ahead. Chris, uh, you know, because it's a very important point. You know, I'm glad you brought up this slide. As Enrique said, pretty much everything on this page is happening today. This is not five or 10 years out. Uh, I mean, the, the Quasar DC bi-directional charger, along with the, the My Wallbox software, enables all of this dynamic you know, uh, energy management. And that's, I think that's the, the very important point that we saw in this company, because your earlier point, there's lots of EV charging companies out there. While we think this company has by far the best products, by far the best go-to-market strategy, the only company with the full vertical manufacturing strategy, it's that energy management component that makes it so unique. And um, while it's not fully rolled out here in the United States, we're, we're hoping soon. And Enrique has promised me the very first one of the, uh, the Quasars here, because I got to tell you, Chris, uh, between Enrique and I, we actually have five daughters between the, the two of us. And, you know, it's pretty exciting to be thinking about we're going to be doing stuff that's on this page that's going to make the world better and greener for the next generation. Because let's face it, that's why we're doing this. And, um, you know, my daughters every day tell me, hey, dad, let's get rid of those gas cars. Let's get electric cars. Hey, let's get some solar panels. Let's have this all run together. And this slide does it. And that's what's so exciting. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll follow up on that, Justin. I, I've got three sons and, you know, none of them can drive yet. But two of them that are in school, you know, they're already talking about electric vehicles. They're already talking about, you know, recycling and different things. You know, so I think this next generation definitely excited, you know, for initiatives, um, you know, to make the earth a little bit greener. So, you know, I'm excited for technology, you know, like this. 
one more question for you guys, and then I'm going to turn it back over to Mitch with some questions. And then I know our chat is going uh, crazy with more questions out here too. Um, and this may be with both of, for both of you, but uh, you know, completing this SPAC merger, you know, there's going to be uh, more money for Wallbox. You know, more access to capital. Is there any plans, you know, for M and A activity, um, you know, within the industry, or maybe some uh, vertical integration here? Well, I'll, I'll let me answer the question first, and I'll turn it over to Enrique. But you know, we raised the capital for this company, and it's in the slide deck that everyone has seen. Uh, to really fulfill uh, these growth initiatives that we just highlighted here. And so we have a fully funded business plan. That's to build out not only manufacturing here in North America, but also in Europe and really on a global basis. Uh, the next slide you'll see, um, you know, and you can see to build these facilities, uh, they're, they're pretty uh, asset light. Uh, you can see our CapEx at the bottom of the page. And once again, uh, we know how to build facilities. Our team here at Kensington, that's all we've done for the last 30 years is building high tech automotive grade facilities around the world. So, uh, you know, we're going to help uh, the management team of Wallbox here really build this out. But we feel very confident that, you know, the capital here is to build out these facilities. Also, very importantly, uh, Chris, you know, your, your listeners might like to hear this. We've also allocated enough capital here to build out the proper inventory and accounts receivable needed to grow this business. A lot of companies haven't thought about that. And we, you know, look, we're built, we, we know how to build stuff and we know it takes money to build inventory. And so that's fully factored into our business plan. So we've thought about everything here and uh, we're very excited for really the top line that you see on this page, which does not include any M and a, uh, you know, anything that would be M and a or, or you know, additive to the plan would just be in addition to what you see here. Yeah, exactly. So it will be a, it's, it's not considered here. It will be an addition. Uh, you know, maybe some we're looking into some companies in terms of aqua hires. I call them. You know, the companies that have technology and talent that can accelerate our plans for hiring. There's some 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 of the possibilities, but right now. Uh, we you know we are the fastest growing. We have the right technology. We are in front of the competition, so we don't really see a need for 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 these in the short term. All right, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here now. One of the things that I wanted to point out, and I'll go to Enrique with this, is how did this happen? I, I want to point out this number one bestseller on Amazon. How has that happened and, and what are you seeing in this? Are you guys seeing more of a third party or can we just come directly to you guys to, if we wanted the Quasar? How does it work? So this is for the Pulsar Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, our product we launched just four months ago in the US. So uh, in in a matter of two months, we became number one bestsellers. I think today we are between one and five, depends on the day. You know, it's changing constantly, the, 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 the top five. Uh, but I, I was seeing that for the Prime Day, we were at the top of the wish list. So, uh, you, you know, this is one part of, a small part of our sales channel. As I say, direct sales is around 20% of our of our sales. You know, we have our distributors, our uh, car manufacturers that sell our products, resellers. So, uh, in the US, especially, uh, you can go to an installer and they will start recommending uh, Wallbox products. But if you directly want to buy one of our products, just go uh, online to wallbox.com. Or Amazon.com that you and you can buy buy it, but most of uh, of our products uh, can, can be uh, we sell in many channels and it happens thanks to the technology, to the design and the fact that we make it very simple. You know, it's just for the user it's just plug and charge and we take care of the rest. Our products charge when energy is cheaper, so you save money and this is especially critical in many countries in in Europe, but it's starting to happen also in the US. So, you know, the price of the energy changes by the hour. So charging when energy is cheaper in a transparent way for the user is critical. We adapt to the power of your installation. So when there's limitations of power and uh, you, you have what's called power boost, but if you start the air conditioning, the heating, and you start having limitations on your power of your installation, our charges automatically connect with your smart meter and they make sure they always charge at the maximum power of, the, of your installation. So you always charge as fast as possible. And finally, you know, we have this smart energy management. So we combine with solar panels. If there's more than one charge in an installation, we do what's called power sharing. So the charger store between them and decide which is the best strategy to charge all the cars as fast as possible. 
And a very simple thing like uh, locking the charger. You know, if you don't want that your neighbor goes and use your car, uh, if you go to Amazon, uh, in, in, in most of the locks are actual, actual physical padlocks, and we have an app and you just can lock it remotely. Or you know, it's very very simple. So making very simple, uh, thanks to our technology, our products is what allow us to be in the top. Yeah, the other thing I'd like to point out uh, is that uh, Wallbox is the only company that has Bluetooth capabilities. Mm -hmm. And people think of Bluetooth and they think of, oh, your headphones or something. But the fact that you could actually plug this in, set it up, control it, do payments, everything over Bluetooth, which is pretty fascinating um, and makes it so easy. I mean, you know, there's plenty of places that you just don't have a good Wi-Fi signal in your garage. Uh, you know, I installed one actually at the end of my driveway because that's where everyone parks. I mean, I'm way out of Wi-Fi range. It works off of Bluetooth. Uh, no one else offers that. But this goes back to the simplicity uh, that Enrique mentioned. You take it out of the box. It's packaged very, you know, efficiently. And uh, look, you can buy it on Amazon if you want. But truth be told, most people are going to be buying it when they purchase their new vehicle. And as we see Ford and GM and you know, all the domestics here start offering much more proliferation of vehicles, um, you know, we'll have the certification right from the OEM so that they know that their dealers can actually sell the product and not have to worry about voiding the warranty on your battery or anything like that. Very important. Once again, we're auto people. We know the right people within the, the OEMs to, to help facilitate that very important step. Excellent. So the next question I want to get into is more long. We were just talking about kind of the software here. Um, what I want to ask is how does this software work? Is it kind of a, a monthly managed service? Is it something that you guys provide with the product? How does the, the user friendly app work here? Yeah. So we have two main softwares. One is my Wallbox, which is for home and semi-public charging. Semi-public is hotels, condominiums, restaurants, enterprises. And that's my wallbox, and the other one is Electromaps, which is the public charging app. So let me talk first about my wallbox, which is the one you're showing here. For home, it's uh, for free. So we allow our users to uh, manage their energy at home, charge more energy cheaper for free. It comes straight out of the box. So anybody can, can use it with the app, with the watch, um, with the portal. For uh, semi-public spaces, enterprises, hotels, restaurants, condominiums, it's a software as a service that you pay around five dollars a month per charger connected to the platform, and it allows you to do anything that you will do with the, with any platform. You know, you can uh, sell the energy uh, with micro payments or monthly payments. You can know each neighbor in a condominium how much is spending in terms of energy every day, and at the end of the month, you can automatically send them an invoice. Uh, you can reimburse them. Uh, in some countries where you want uh, to know how much energy is an employee spending at home and in the office and make sure you compensate all this energy. All of this is managed through our uh, software platform. And Electromaps, uh, which is the public charging app, uh, this is a leading platform in Southern Europe. We have in some countries in Southern Europe 90% of market share uh, of EV users. And this allows you to locate any public charging uh, uh, any public charger and uh, pay for it. So these chargers, we don't own them. We are we have agreements with all these operators. We have more than 150,000 chargers connected to this platform. And uh, as an EV driver, you can find them, you can uh, pay for them. But more important is the social aspect because uh, charging is not reliable uh, as per today. You know, there's, there's some issues when charging uh, in, in the in the public space. So EV drivers are telling in real time where's the issue, which is the best place to stop. When you are planning a route, automatically tells you which is the best place to, to stop. And all this data is not only being used by the drivers, it's also used by uh, data companies like TomTom, for example. They buy uh, this data from us to update the navigation maps in, the, in their uh, navigators for electric cars. So with this product, what we do is we, we, we just charge for the energy. Every time you charge, we, we, we have a, a fee, which is a 10% fee for every energy transaction. For my wallbox, as I said, it's a software as a service with five euros a month. Definitely, definitely. Something that's going to interest, uh, I think, a lot of investors out there is kind of how you just mentioned it. There's not only just one platform, there's kind of two platforms here uh, really kicking 
And, and, and one of the things that I definitely am going to be focused on is how we kind of move to from electro maps. I'm sure we're going to be kind of moving to over to the U.S. So I'll be paying attention towards that as we kind of develop our own infrastructure. Um, and, and we're going to be pushing towards the next level. Yeah, you, you can download it in the U.S. There's some charges already there from mm -hmm. people is uploading them and we are starting to make some some partnership. But. You know, in Europe, as we're where is stronger today, but of course we are we're bringing this in the U.S. And already some charges are you can locate them through Electro Maps today uh, in the U.S. Yeah. Well, thumbs up uh, but, there. But you know, here what, what we see is that seventy percent of charging happens at home. So you know, we my world was we solve most of charging, but we want people still to solve all the charging needs without without leaving our platform. So you know, when you go with uh, once per month or once per week when you go to public charging you still can use our app and locate and pay for any public charger definitely so the next thing i want to get into was i did stall i did see kind of installer partnerships um that's kind of an interesting aspect to me just because one of the things that i think gets uh kind of mixed up is that some people are, are really kind of scared of technology. You know, we have those people that are just like, oh, no, it's too advanced for me. So how, how do you guys work with your installer partnerships to kind of get these products installed? Yeah, so so maybe, Justin, you want to, how was your sure. experience when you both won? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, first of all, um, you know, a lot of people do have a 220 uh, outlet in their garage already. They might have it for, you know, a dryer or a welder or something like that. You know, you order this product or you buy it through your dealer, you bring it home, you open the box, uh, you plug it in and you screw it into the wall and you're done. That's about it. Uh, it's very easy to install. Um, you know, other people say, listen, I have to call an electrician and have them put in a line either in my house or you can put it outside your house, completely waterproof, and you pay them. Uh, you know, the installer route is a little bit more prevalent in Europe. Uh, the company actually has developed a very innovative kind of uh, one-stop shopping, one payment. Uh, you get the install and the product all in one shot. We're going to probably be seeing a little bit more of that here in the United States, um, you know, as people, you know, start buying more of these devices. But, you know, I would like to just, you know, go back and highlight a point that Enrique just made a moment ago, if you didn't catch it, 70 to 80 percent of all charging uh, is happening at the home or your place of business. It's not happening on the highway or at these public charging locations. While Wallbox has a public charging option because we have some customers that really want that product and we are selling that to them. We are really focused on that home and business universe, which we believe we're not even in the first inning yet uh, for baseball analogy here. Uh, so we feel that this is really going to take off pretty dramatically. And I want to highlight another point, and this, this really resonates with us because the team at Kensington knows a lot about battery technology. We obviously know that batteries are getting better. Cars are getting longer range. They can charge faster. All of these characteristics are leading to come to people saying, you know what, pretty soon I'm going to get the full charge at my home and I might be able to drive that vehicle for a week without having to charge it anywhere else. So so we believe that the home and the place of business is going to become even more important. And I'm going to add one last component on here to put it in perspective. I don't know if you guys have electric cars right now, but, you know, I have friends. I live in a suburb of uh, New York City. And I have friends here that will drive to Connecticut or New Jersey to fill up their car with gasoline just to save themselves 25 cents a gallon. Well, if I were to tell you that the cheapest gasoline you can get for your electric car is right in your own garage. In other words, you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go to a public charging location. You don't have to pay extra fees. You don't have to pay for the maintenance on those public chargers. Guess what? That electricity, the cheapest electricity is right in your own garage. We think when people start to realize that, and they're going to say, you know what, I'm going to top off my car in my own garage before I ever go anywhere. That's why we are so excited about the Wallbox product. We think the focus on the home and business is the best, and no one else is really focused on it like that. Definitely, definitely. At the end of the day, what does the consumer want more than anything in digital is convenience. That's the magic word right there. And if you can make it 
anything com more convenient. I mean, if you can save me time so I don't have to end up going to the gas station, I could just end up driving where I need to be heading to versus making stops and, and, and wasting time. I think that's definitely something that's going to affect the consumer. Last okay. thing I want to get to, um, just so we can get to wrap up here, guys, we're almost towards 12 o'clock. I kept you guys for a long time. I'm enjoying it. I could keep going. I got many more questions, but let's just talk a little bit about benchmarking here. You've talked about it. What stands out to me, we, 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 can, we can just point it out again, 45.5% gross margins. For me, I always look for, and at least for my education, I've looked for a little bit above 35. And man, 45 really stands out to me. You can see the peers here, Tesla at 21, Blink at 24, ChargePoint at 24.4. How are you guys able to achieve this monstrous margin here, Enrique? So it goes both things, the technology and the, the vertically integrated uh, manufacturing. And I, I just want to talk about our technology, you know, especially for Quasar and Supernova, we have uh, what's called super high frequency uh, switching. So these devices uh, transform AC to DC. Uh, and what at the end you have is a, is a MOSFET, uh, which is with silicon carbide technology, which opens and closes many times per second. So. The standard, industrial standard, and what our competition is doing today, it's uh, 20 kilohertz frequency. So 20,000 times per second, they are opening and closing this switch. We do this between half a million and one million times per second. So we work at very high frequencies. We have patents that allow us to have the transformers, the coils, the capacitors working at those high frequencies. And what it does at the end is that you can make the product very compact and very affordable because more compact means less copper, less capacitors, which is at, at the end, the, the, the parts of the product that you cannot drop the cost. You know, at the end, the price of the copper is the price of the copper. So uh, having this high frequency switching technology allow us to have a product that, you know, at, at, until Quasar, uh, bidirectional chargers were prototypes the size of a fridge, 200 kgs, super expensive. Quasar, we are starting uh, to, uh, from this summer, we are dropping the price of Quasar uh 2500 euros so really really an affordable price for for this product and thanks to the uh, uh, high frequency switching technology so the technology allows us to make the product much more affordable and second uh, is the vertical integrated manufacturing uh, the controlling the supply chain not only allows us to go, be faster launching new products allow us to control uh, the cost and and the, and the margin and this is special especially important as justin said before uh, with the allocations that are happening with uh, in the in the technology industry you know with chips and uh, where there's scarcity of all these all these components we controlling that we can ensure we have the best components and we control the supply chain so we already have control over the next 18 months of our supply chain in terms of cost and delivery so we make sure our costs don't increase even there's a scarcity of components as I can tell, you guys are definitely holding the whole ecosystem. And that's really what I can see here. It's not just the platform. It's not just kind of a, a product. You got the platforms behind it, the technology. And like you guys said, uh, a team that's really working towards it. I, it really interests me to learn a lot more. I'm going to be looking at it myself. You know, one of the things that I've been looking at is uh, I've been looking at these kind of wall box, different products from different kind of companies. And I think this is just starting to really get big especially in areas where you do run into power issues. Let's say we just saw that Texas problem that went through. We saw, uh, I, I'm, I'm from Florida, so I know a lot about the hurricane life. And with the hurricane life, hey, hey the generators definitely get a little old. They get, they get annoying. They're loud, uh, obnoxious, and dangerous. You know, that's another thing that most people don't realize a lot. So I'm definitely going to be looking at this product. Let's go ahead and bring Chris back in here. What's going on, Chris? We got some chat questions. Yeah, you know, Enrique and Justin, we, we've kept you longer than I'm sure we told you. But if you've got a couple <laughs> more minutes, we've, we've got some excited fans out here in the chat, you know, some shareholders. So let's dive into some questions quickly here. So uh, we've got Cole asking, does Wallbox have a deal with Ford for the F-150? Any comments on, you know, the relationship with Ford and possible uh, F-150 partnership? Maybe Henri? Oh, we, we, I don't think we can share anything about this. This Right now, we don't have uh, a public deal with them. 
Okay. And then another question here from uh, Caleb Zombie Main. Um, Justin, I'm, a, I'm assuming maybe for you, uh, is there plans for Wallbox to work with QuantumScape? Any synergies, you know, between the two companies that, that you've taken public here via SPAC? Uh, there's nothing that uh, we've disclosed or announced, uh, but clearly, uh, you know, personally, uh, people are probably aware that I am on the board of QuantumScape. Uh, and clearly the Kensington team has pretty deep knowledge of how batteries are currently used today, but more importantly, how they're going to be used in about five years from now. And so clearly we are incorporating some of that knowledge in where we see the trend going, as I pointed out earlier, in terms of a whole energy management. And I think you've heard some discussion about things like energy storage. Um, so a lot of that is being incorporated, um, but there is nothing that uh, we're working on that uh, we can publicly disclose. And then I have more of a comment here from uh, NCAL saying, new homes in California are being pre-wired for electric vehicles. It would be an excellent opportunity for uh, the company like this to jump in. You know, uh, we, we've talked a little bit about the, the home power here, but Enrique, any uh, thoughts here on, you know, maybe some of these states, um, you know, really pushing for, for homes to be set up for electric vehicles and how Wallbox could really benefit from that? Yeah, this is great because at the end, uh, you don't even have to open the charger. You just have a plate. You Anybody can place this plate and connect to the NEMA 1450. So is, anybody can can install this. So this is, this is great for us. Yeah. And just to point out, you know, we do have a full team in Northern California. So uh, that is the, uh, the North American headquarters for Wallbox. And so we have a team there growing. And uh, you know, really great group there. A lot of uh, a lot of ex Tesla people, but uh, you know, clearly, uh, you know, we we have our finger on the pulse of what's going on here in the U.S. I also want to point out, you, we do have someone on the board here at Kensington uh, who is in the uh, administration and very uh, knowledgeable about what's going on with the whole infrastructure uh, build, and so uh, that that is clearly factoring in how we're going to be rolling out here in the U.S. Perfect. And then uh, another question, same user here, NCAL. What segment of business do they see growing the fastest, home, business, or commercial? Yes. Uh, all of the above, right? Mm -hmm. I like it. I like the answer. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's once again, the beauty is, you know, you guys hit the nail on the head. I mean, there's companies out there that are going down one particular path. And Enrique, I mean, just really his visionary, you know, team here to look at this entire universe and have product that fits every one of these needs. But as you heard him mention, it has technology guts on the inside that is, is used across the product portfolio. That enables the company to scale up because they're manufacturing everything in-house, reduce costs dramatically. That's where you get these great gross margins. And as you guys know, the more electronics you buy, the more printed circuit boards you buy, you get that price down. And we're anticipating you know, growing the business even more profitably in the future. Perfect. And then uh, we, we've gotten lots of questions on the show before. This might actually be one of the tougher ones we've gotten uh, from Ray in the chat. So uh, I'll let both of you answer here. So uh, the user said one sentence, why is your product better than competitors? So what, what's the one sentence summary uh, versus the competition here? Well, I you know, with, with our products, you can you can charge your car. This is a given. But you, what's more important is that you are pro uh, having an energy management device with an energy management software that is is going to enable the energy transition at your home level, but also at the grid level. And I would just say it is a highly profitable energy management company. Awesome, awesome summary. I got an answer too. <laughs> Let's hear it. Full suite of EV charging solutions and software. Don't forget about that last part too. <laughs> can we copy? Is that copyrighted? Can we use it? You can hey, use that. I'll we tell you. I'll it. tell you. I'll tell you. Where, where did I get this from? <laughs> right there. Number number one to the growth drivers, guys. There you. There you go. Perfect. One more question uh, from me for you, Justin. Before we let you go, you know you brought QuantumScape and Wallbox Public. What's uh, Kensington Capital's current plans for uh, more SPACs? Are there more in the pipeline and uh, what can we expect here? So Kensington Capital, uh, this is all we do. We have a singular focus. Uh, we did one SPAC last year and 
you know, as you as you pointed out, uh, you know, we executed that transaction in a very efficient manner, uh, and we did it on behalf of all of our stakeholders, not uh, not not just uh, Kensington, but the company, the pipe investors, the public shareholders, and um, and we feel very importantly that we like to see these uh, transactions go through, you know, on a very efficient basis, and and we take our time. So. You know, right now we have no other plans. This is our plan right now, sole focus on wall box. Uh, and, um, you know, we want to make sure that we have a, you know, execution on transaction here that is very transparent. It's another thing that we like about these deals and that we can deliver the capital needed for Enrique to, to fulfill his business plan. That's the number one goal. So that's all we're doing right now. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you you both for joining us on the show and also staying late, right? We ran some overtime today with some extended questions. So, you know, again, joining us on SPACs Attack, we have Enric Asuncion, the CEO of Wallbox, and Justin Miro, the chairman and CEO of Kensington Capital. That ticker is KCAC. Uh, gentlemen, we look forward to, you know, following the progress of this deal and uh, hopefully hearing from you soon, you know, as this deal progresses and uh, we, we get through the de process here. So thank you both for, you know, taking time out of your busy schedule and joining us on the show today. Thanks a lot, thank Chris you. and Mitch. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. All right, guys, there you go is have it. Another exclusive interview. And man, I, I got to say, uh, I could keep going for like an hour with those guys. I had so many more questions that I wanted to ask. I, I could go into in depth into the technology. We could talk more about the numbers. But really, it, it's like I stated, I, I think it's really all about just a, a full suite here, not just one part. And that's why we got I, that's why I think we have so many questions, too. That's a good thing. You know, when we have that many questions, guys, that's something that you can take a look at is that there was still more questions that Chris and I want to ask about this company. So that, that that's something interesting just to add. Yeah, you know, and it looks like the chat love this company. You know, we see your comments out there, people who own shares, people who are going to add shares, you know, after this interview, you know, again, we, we try to bring you the best guests we can on this show. If there's a company you want to hear from, let us know in the chat or hit Mitch or I up on Twitter. That's going to do it for, for today. You know, we, we pushed past noon, uh, went a little late. Tomorrow, we'll try to dive into the watch list more and some of those ideas. But, but we also have an interview tomorrow as well. So stay tuned, uh, you know, and we'll see you on SPAX Attack uh, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Power Hour coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Definitely, guys, we got Power Hour coming up next. Stick around. We'll definitely be focused and, and kind of staying with the SPACs. SPACs definitely on the move. Let me take a quick look at my watch list. Now looking like SPCE leading, uh, at least from right here. I'm seeing Clover take a little bit of a pullback. Nicola take a little bit of a pullback. Desktop uh, DM holding those 13s. That's what I want to see it close above today. Above 13s, it ripped out from about 1250s. So definitely keep your eyes on that one. PSAC, what's up with this one, Chris? Why is it moving on up today? It looks like a strong chart. Is there anything with property solutions right now? I haven't seen anything in the news on that one. Um, that's interesting, though, being up 4% here. Um, we did have, looks like news yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. delaying the shareholder vote. Um, so I, I'm not sure if that's that's enough here to to move it. Um, so maybe there was some trouble with uh, getting enough votes here, but uh, it, it looks like it was pushed back. So uh, interesting, uh, you know, movement there. But yeah, SPCE leading the way. Uh, Clove was up, what, double digits when we started the show and, and now up about 8%. Um, you know, so some big movers out there. Uh, Mud still up 3%. Um, I still think that that earnings report and that guidance from them was incredibly strong. Um, you know, that's one that I like here on any pullbacks. Um, uh, you know, this is one that traded well over that mark not too long ago. So interesting uh, earnings report from uh, Tops there, Mitch. Definitely, definitely. And keep on the lookout for those cards release. I'm, 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 I'm myself and I'm, I'm looking at it every single day. I have to, I have uh, Tops Digital on Twitter. I know it's going to come out. And when it announces, 
I'm going to try to be quick to the gun there. So definitely pay attention for that, guys. Uh, we, we talked about MUDs and kind of the commissions that they've been making, and I expected that bottom line to show up there. Um, I'm going to be looking more into the earnings so I can point out exactly the commissions that they that they made. So I'm going to be looking through it. I'll be talking a little bit more about this on the next SPACs attack. Hit us up in the comments, guys. What do you guys want more of? What company? Let me know. We'll make it happen for you. Coming up next, Power Hour.